just end the game against Q-Block since they will be life tapping. But Q-Block is one of those decks that it can do, I would say, ignorant things that other decks can't do. Yeah, I think um, the, the cloning gallery, I think, oh, no messing around. And just off the start, I think this is extremely important for Swaggy G right here. Swaggy G getting this Q. It's going to be Swaggy G on the Togwaggle Druid versus Seiyun on the Odd Warrior. And this is a pretty abysmal matchup for Warrior. This is one of those matchups where Warrior just kind of cringes at and says, I can't do much about it. Yeah, and it's interesting to see that the people who brought Tog, they're, they're the ones who guessed right there's going to be a lot of Warrior here. And there has been a phenomenal amount of Warrior at this tournament. That's the really main reason to bring. The word. Yeah, that's the main reason to bring the Togwaggle Druid over the Malagos Druid. Is Malagos Druid would lose this matchup. Togwaggle Druid has a free win in this matchup. They are very similar in how they deal with aggressive decks, but they're very different with how they deal with control decks. One of the things I found, I've obviously highlighted Sion pretty heavily already no, in this um, sort of preamble here. But one of the things I have found that's particularly good about Sion's play is how he approaches. You know, the really low percentage matchups. That's where he gets a lot of his edge from, is, is finding ways to turn them around. So it'll be interesting to see how he approaches just trying to get this done. Fortunately for Swaggy, he does not have that wild growth to start ramping yet, but if you can afford a matchup to not have wild growth, it's this one. Apparently how many the genius turns name do you does feel not stand has? for growth. <laughs> Swaggy growth. Oh, never mind. Oh, wait. He snap played that. That just looked like a wild growth. You know when a player picks up the top card of their deck and they just snap play it? Yeah. I always think it's Wild Growth. It's, it's usually <laughs> whatever we've just been talking about, it turns exactly. out to be that card. No immediate pressure here for Sayun. It's not much fun either. And that's the story of Odd Warrior is no immediate pressure. I mean, the most you can do right now is play Soul of the Gorgon for a 2-2 to try and rack up a little bit of damage. And, I mean, as crazy as it sounds, yeah, it is a viable play. He has to consider that for sure. Try and get something in there. Well, there's a nourish, so Swaggy's not going to just have to do it the the normal way that the other eight classes have to deal with. He's going to get that acceleration, and that's absolutely huge. Obviously, just any acceleration at all. Start rifling through that deck. Does he need to nourish? I mean, he does, right? Yeah, so There's definitely. never a world where you just take cards, especially when you've got UI in hand. Um, there are very few cases where you would take cards, but in this current hand, you definitely want to ramp to get to, ultimate, to get to that ultimate infestation as quickly as possible. A redeeming factor now that I'm looking at the deck list for Seiyun is that he has Azelina Soul Thief in his list. Mm -hmm. So with having Azelina Soul Thief, it makes the matchup much more doable because you can take the combo and try and finesse your win through that. It's a very, very fringe case scenario, but it definitely is a possibility. There's no real way, at least with this hand, Sayun's going to be able to do the beat down strategy. Yeah, you end up in this weird world where you have to just tiptoe around each other's Azelinas as well. You might see some plays that look strange because obviously, thank goodness, they can't see each other's hands. So anything that looks weird probably is based on that. Another important factor in this matchup uh, because a lot of slow things are going to be happening in the early stages, so we can kind of talk about the overall game plan for both decks. One thing Swaggy G has to be very conscious of is not allowing Azelina to become the reduced card. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is one of the ways Warrior can win, especially since Sayun has access to his own Azelina, is Sayun will take the Azelina from Swaggy, mm -hmm. and then start nice. playing zero mana Azelinas and naturalizing over and over and over and over until he either burns cards or he does a lot of fatigue damage to Swaggy. Wall of Azelinas and your opponent has no cards in their deck and they're taking damage. If you've got the time to do it, we've seen it. Hunter has famously struggled to get that done on the clock, but he still won anyway, but he sort of took the, the line of least resistance when the rope started burning. And that's why I think you saw Swaggy G not necessarily play the Dream Petal Florist. It is kind of an opportune time to reduce one of the combo pieces, but he really wants to at least have a chance of reducing King Togwaggle rather than reducing something like the Azelina. So Sayun going through the motions now, setting up some sort of board. This is all the the preamble. I've used that word twice now. I must be careful with words. Just to... You know, do the things you're supposed to, try and exert some pressure, blah, blah, blah. But both players know this isn't going to work in terms of at least any sort of short to medium term damage. 
think Garrett's goal here is going to be able to clear out his hand for the ultimate infestation. Yeah. And that's the most difficult part, I just realized, about casting with your friends, is I know both of these players really well, so I know them by their names. <laughs> yeah, Not it's necessarily weird. the tag, so I just called Swaggy G Garrett. <laughs> it's just instinctually. It's kind of funny. Yeah, I just call you, like, Dr. J. You just call me Wash, And you call me Luminda because we're not friends. So that's exactly. Easy. Or you just call me Wash. Oh, I've never done that. That's entirely uh, that cool. That has been done before. Admirable does it all the time. Yeah. But, you know, this is going to be your, your second Atlanta final in a row. Exactly. Don't you forget that one. And finding any... Co but these people just, like, stared at the board there. Finding any sort of coherent game plan here for Sayun is so tricky. Azalina's make games so messy. He needs to get access to Azalina. Unfortunately for Odd Warrior, there's not a that much draw inside of the deck besides the occasional uh, shield block. It's so irritating. Whenever you want to not draw cards with Warrior because you're in a mirror or something, your hand seems to be full of shield blocks and <laughs> yeah, all sorts of gubbins. That's mostly because the matchup just goes that long that you're going to have, you're going yeah. to see every card in your deck. This one is not necessarily that matchup. Yeah, now he wants the card draw. They <laughs> realize there isn't actually that much hanging around in the deck. Odd Warrior is such a strange deck. The, the cards in it, I just like this collection of nothing. And you've got this amazing hero power to turn them into a collection of something. Look, people are never happy with Warrior. Oh, when it was Pirate Warrior, they said, oh, this is too fast. Then when it was Odd Warrior, they're like, oh, this is too slow. We need a medium Warrior. It's like, well, even Tempo Warrior was irritating playing. <laughs> it really was. We need a, we need a mid-range Warrior that can be aggressive with a control game plan. I think I think That'll every make game. People, happy. people are never happy, Chase. <laughs> every game needs a deck that people don't like, though. Every every, every class ne needs to be hated. Right. <laughs> there's, there's like the happiness. What is it? There. Warrior's not the uh, class we need, but it's the no, it's not the class we deserve, but it's the class we yeah, need. Exactly. <laughs> Warrior, <not the> class. <laughs> definitely a huge part of the game. Imagine world without Warrior would not be fun. Okay, here Swaggy. I would not yeah. be surprised to see Swaggy G play out the florist now. Mm -hmm. He finally has the Tog Waggle, so he may be considering that, but I think he was waiting for the florist to have access to this Tog Waggle to at least decrease the chance of it hitting Asalina. What's his plan with a naturalize in hand if he's going for that plan? Because obviously if it's going to get zero mana Asalina back in your face, things go bad for it's a tough call to make. The thing is, right now, if Siyun were to have Azelina, he wouldn't necessarily be able to go infinite with the naturalizes because he'll only have one mana to play one naturalize, which isn't the worst case in the world. But it looks like Swaggy G is going for a line of play of trying to, I guess, maximize how much he's drawn before he goes for the combo. Yeah, I mean, the longer the game goes, the less he's taking guesswork out of the yes. equation as well. Currently, you're just guessing how they got Azelina, and if you're favored, there's no reason to go for it in a hurry and take the guess. There's also another alternative line of play where Swaggy G doesn't necessarily use the Dream Petal Florist in this matchup because Siyun's going to have a very large size hand for the most part, being Odd Warrior. What Swaggy G might be going for is trying to cast his ultimate infestation on the next turn hoping Siyun still has a large hand, yep. and then never playing the Azelina, and just going naturalized, filling the full hand up, and then Tog Waggle. The old-fashioned way, the old before fashioned people started way. comboing it. The more intuitively obvious way, and just take the Azelinas out of that equation. And that's a little bit safer, because it means that you don't necessarily have to reduce any of the cards in your hand, so there's no crazy shenanigans play yeah. where... That makes a lot more There's sense to me. But obviously, Sayun will be aware to this fact as well. And this is what I was saying earlier about, you know, sort of tiptoeing around each other's game plans here. And there's so much to consider. I mean, it's... When you know the matchup, it's reasonably straightforward how you go about it, but one mistake and you lose instantly. I know I've made that mistake before of just getting azalina would it doesn't look nice. You've just got this horde of things looking at you and you've got no cards. It's just no fun at all. Is this as bad as a full board of high mains looking at you, though? 
Oh no, that's that's terrifying. I'd be lying if I said that was avoidable. <laughs> I will say there's going to be one mean machine <laughs> coming in here if this Ziliax gets the played. The mean warrior machine. If he does it next turn, he can faceless it. <laughs> so he was really hoping to try and find like an Omega assembly this turn, mm -hmm. trying to get a beryllium nullifier because that's one of the ways you can win this matchup is by making a minion that cannot be targeted and then facelessing it especially a big minion like that war gear right now i feel we're only just starting to really understand what? mechs properly like day one everyone's like mechs yeah and all the mech decks are kind of day two everyone's rubbish. like mechs no oh. but slowly but surely people are starting to realize mechs. that Me yeah mechs Max. Max. <laughs> well, Sayun got a lot on his plate here. Not only has he got to find some sort of immediate breakthrough, but he's got to make sure he keeps his long-term game plan alive as well. Ooh, and he is just I going love in. Of this. The big noise. Sayun understands that he is not winning this matchup unless he applies pressure. And by making this play here, he pushes 13 damage face. He is just hoping that Swaggy G can't answer this. We can see Swaggy G has a plethora of ways to answer this. Mm -hmm. That's a good word. But Siyun is playing to his outs. Yeah, and he's also keeping the hand down to avoid the, the old-fashioned way, as I exactly. called it earlier. Making it very difficult for Swaggy, especially with only one minion on board, to, to overdraw anything. And Siyun's one of those players that also brought Togwaggle Druid. Both of these players practice together with Togwaggle Druid, so they know the ins and outs. So both of them understand matchups fairly well. And look, Swaggy G is just constantly drawing, and he made a way to where he could draw three cards this turn and also clear off that minion. Yeah, and just zooming through his deck. And now Sayun has got a tempo some owl. issues. Tempo Owl. <laughs> I believe we saw that earlier in the tournament. I believe someone has tempoed Owl. Yeah, we've seen it. Again, okay, it's the old, you've got to empty your hand problem. Swaggy's starting to run out of things to do that aren't the things we've talked about that he's trying to avoid doing. Like, obviously, second UI, pretty grim. Naturalizing needs to save, Togwaggly needs to save. Doesn't want to play the florist, apparently. Nothing to do with his removal. No space to put more cards. Your swagger here, you can go for a play where you go nourish for ramp, then play out the arcane tyrant and the mind control tech. It's not really getting any better in the hand. Looks like he just wants to keep clearing up the board though. He's trying to get awkward cards out of the hand. Yeah, Starfall's not gonna have much to do in this game, so get something right. from it. I think you can tell a lot by a person whether they armor up or attack. Yeah? I think you can tell a lot by a person. So I'm an armor up sort of guy. What does that make me? Weak. And hated by chat. They like to see attacks. They were primed for attack. And attacking is the alpha move. When you progress to the beta version of the deck. <laughs> <laughs> then you... <laughs> There is some argument for both, though. It's very fringe arguments, but there are some arguments for both. It often comes down to, especially in end games, not no necessarily thoughts. in this matchup, but in, in end games where it's really close. It's like, okay, the person who's losing tends to be the one who has to armor up because they're the ones who need to. So the person who's losing in fatigue is the one who has to armor up because they need the extra health. Whereas the yeah. other one who's winning wants to put the kind pressure. of put the pressure on. It's usually very, very careful. You have to count every last point, though. Sometimes you have to switch between the two. It's good to have decisions. It makes games much more interesting. Oddly enough, we see here Swaggy G is really holding on to this Florist because he does not want any chance of losing this game. Yeah. I think he may even be trying to get the other naturalize and just going double naturalize, make them draw, make Sayun draw four cards and then just tag waggle. And, and Sayun is just staying under that threshold though. He is plopping things onto the board as fast as he can draw them, basically. And four cards in Odd Warrior.
and he's only 57 damage away from victory. Well, there's a the second naturalizer now. Swaggy's gonna have to tank for a turn or two and really plot how he's gonna do this because Sayun's not gonna let him do the the togwaggle double naturalize. Sayun is definitely gonna try and play around that as much as possible. And if Swaggy keeps a huge number of cards in his hand, that does restrict his ability to deal with the board. I mean, it's not terrifying. He's got like 11 turns or something in the current board state. It's fine. But... So we can we can see here, from looking at both hands, that if Swaggy G just plays the Florist and just goes for that, he's good. But it looks like he's going for this line of play, which seems, seems strange. But Swaggy G understands that he does not lose this matchup as long as he does not have naturalizes to give yeah. Suyun the infinite naturalized yeah. combo through the Azalina. So what he's going for here is although he just gave Suyun a bunch of cards and a lot of pressure, he's just going to swap the decks next turn and Suyun will only have this hand to work with, that Swaggy G will also have the exact same hand to work with. Yes, and if you're ahead on board, that's usually... And he's at 57 life. As long as he can answer the minions that Suyun plays, he wins the game. And he'll have the same minions to combat. He'll know exactly how to navigate the matchup. So this may have seemed really weird. It definitely does was, seem weird. It does seem very strange, but Swaggy G is trying to play around the only no. physical way he can lose this matchup. Yeah. Yeah, those naturalizers do become somewhat of a liability if you're I guess if you're not careful, but even if you are careful, sometimes they just happen. It's really hard though when your win condition is, it's not hard counter at all, it's, it's a massively favoured matchup for the Druid, but when your win condition has this weird countermeasure to it. And Sion really wants to try and answer this somehow, but I don't think he needs to, I think he has to just kind of put minions on the board. Looks like he's going to answer it though. I mean, if he's ahead on board, it makes it a little bit harder for the swap to be totally effective. Out of cards. He knows the hand because there's two cards left in Swaggy's deck. So you can just assume every card's in there. That's actually funny. Soon got the shield slam out of his hand, knowing Swaggy G's next turn. That way he can't shield slam yep. his own minion, because he will have mana left over. It's crazy to think of how in-depth these players are thinking right now. Oh, yeah, you can tell, because there's nothing to do, apparently in a lot of those turns, <laughs> and they're roping every turn. They're thinking so far, they were thinking so far ahead. Now we're, we're at the ahead point now, and this is where the action is going to kick off. Swaggy G is at 60 health. He could literally do nothing for a couple turns, just take a couple dinosaur hits and move on with his life. And he has the full extent of Siyun's deck. And even if he finds something like a Shield Slam or a Reckless Flurry, he can actually cast that because he does have the Druid yep. Malfurion hero power. Yeah, it's hard to see how Sayun can come back from there. Well, Sayun's going to try and get every piece of tempo he can. That's the only resource he has now. Obviously, having the Elise can at least break the mirror. The, the two packs won't be identical. And he'll get his pack next turn. Oh, he's at a 54, Jace. <laughs> The damage is racking up. But the worst part about this is Seun knows there's a brawl on the other side. Yeah. And there's not much he can do about it. These turns are so... It's weird when you know your opponent's hand, card for card, or very, very near to it. It makes it so much harder to play there. You think you make it easier. It's easier if you know theirs and they don't know yours. But when you're thinking, well, they know I know, that they know, that he knows, that the casters even know. I will say, though, I would have liked to have seen Swaggy G actually trade the Togwaggle in first. The reason I say that is because with the play that Swaggy G went for, there's a 50-50 to have a really good chance at the Brawl. So if his Togwaggle wins, it's extremely good. Yes. The, if the... At least the Trailblazer wins, it's a pretty good turnout. But if one of the 6-9s lives, it's a, a little bit win. awkward. Yeah. Whereas if he trades in the 5-2, it is a 66% to be fairly good, it will come out to this outcome, whereas there will be a 33 oh, that a 6-9 will live. Well. Yeah. So it decreases the odds that a 6-9 yeah. will live. Which is the key thing, because that's the one thing he, I'm going to say, can't deal with, but, you know, he can deal with pretty much everything at this point. But 
the hardest thing to deal with. I mean, all Swagger G has to do now is just... He knows all the cards in the hand. He knows there's a lease pack. He may be thinking about what's the worst case scenario that comes off the Elise pack. For instance, worst case scenario is something like Tyrantis. So he may actually save the Faceless to try and contest something like a yeah. Tyrantis. Although he does have Reckless Flurry, he can just get rid of his Druid armor. <laughs> yeah, 24 <laughs> tends to kill Tyrantai. So he's just trying to dig his way through there with the mouse. <laughs> he's gonna tunnel his hand into his opponent's face. All right, this pack needs to be extraordinary. It's been known. Hunter Ace getting that mirror match out of Warrior oh, versus gosh. Don't get me Dead Man's started Warrior. On that one. Last that one three was packs. insane. I don't think any of the viewers at home got to see that one, but that oh, Hunter yeah, that like versus Hobby in the morning. was insane. Chittering Tunneler from the pack and then gets Dead Man's Hand from the Tunneler when he's not playing the Dead Man's Hand deck. And then he steals a Dead Man's Hand and suddenly he's the Dead Man's Hand deck and outgrinded uh, a terrible matchup. So the packs can do. I mean, it's not even worth predicting beyond the time and sort of situations the craziness that can happen with packs. It just tends not to. Or no, I think the best thing to do is just sit back and watch what's in the pack. Just yeah. crack. Just crack open a pack with the boys. But I'm one of those people who likes to try and predict the future and stuff. No, and one day I'll get it right. Just watch it happen, Lorinda. Thousands of people tune in to watch other people opening packs. I should just join the join the crowd, I guess. Looks like he's gonna give it one more turn, trying to put as much pressure up as possible. I yeah. think Siyun is trying to force out the reckless flurry. That way he can get a pack and then hopefully find something like a Tyrantis that will stick. I think that's how he wins this game. Yeah, he's, he's made space in his hand for that pack as well. So, going to get the full benefit of all five cards. Does have a little bit of time. It's not like um, Swaggy's just going to demolish him anytime soon, most likely. Here's Swaggy G here. I would like to see the Amoga Assembly first. You can't find something like... Actually, you can't find the... I was going to say you could find Dynamatic. But I realized that you're Druid now, and you won't have access to the warrior ones. You're Druid now. <laughs> he was always Druid. You, you over there, you are Druid now. But this missile launcher actually cleans up the 7-1 Baku. Are tangled well. I'm actually surprised he didn't want to play the spring rocket and then magnetize it. Looks like he just wants to get a little bit more pressure on the board. My yeah, is this is it. This is pack time automatically, I think, now. All right, bust it open. What's in the pack? Stuff. Dinosaurs. A whole lot of nothing. <laughs> that was probably one of the worst packs. It's not a good I have pack. Ever seen in my life. And I've seen quite a lot of packs. As a matter of fact, when every new expansion comes out, I pre order a lot of packs. Yeah, I'm the same. And this one was worse than all of those. <laughs> Wait till next expansion, you get one pack now. It's like, that's worse than that pack that Sayun got. <laughs> I want this pack refunded. Lorna, can I borrow your notebook? I need to write this down for the history that that pack was one of the worst packs yeah, I've ever seen. Um, I'll put it in the spreadsheet later. Do you care what page I go to? Um, any page will do. Yeah, there you go. This page? All right. Yeah. Dear Diary. <laughs> <laughs> It gets stopped, November 18th. Please. It was a Sunday. One year ago, I won DreamHack Atlanta, and here I am, <laughs> talking about bad packs. So you opened up a pack. Probably one of the worst packs I have ever seen in the history <laughs> of Hearthstone Elise packs. Yours truly, washed up caster, Dr. J. Cool has really got to you with that, hasn't she? She really has. Good. She's done her job well. Good. <laughs> I'll reimburse her later. <laughs> oh, so you've been the one <laughs> the whole time. And as you can tell, as we're talking about packs and things, that uh, Sayun is running out of options. And by running out, I mean he's run out. Swaggy's got another Azalina if things go wrong. They're not going to go wrong. You know, how many Azalinas would you like? Let me borrow the book again. Sure. He's actually borrowing the book each time he says this, by the way. I'm quite scared. P.S. 
This will be the thickest Galaga crawler I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> I'm done. You're so, you're so <laughs> loving it. I'm taking my book. <laughs> I'll be reading up those notes when I get home. <laughs> it's just a tempo score for Matt. Just, it's just over. Look at how big this Galaka crawler is going to get. It's going to make the big noise. There you go. Going down with the big noise. He's now going to get probably silent. <laughs> this will. Wait, let me, let me borrow the book one oh more time, goodness. Lorenda. The book is now full of Dr. J's awful handwriting. This will be one of the coolest Iron Beak owls ever. <laughs> <laughs> God, that thing used to cost two. <laughs> <laughs> it could cost <clears throat> ten, and it still does the same thing right now. Yep. Win the game. <laughs> And the worst part about this is Siyun knows it's in the hand. Yeah, it's like, maybe Swaggy forgets what it does. <laughs> it's a basic card, but, you know, or common. And Siyun does hit the end of the game button, and it goes to 1-0 to Swaggy G. Reminder, this is the quarterfinal here at DreamHack Atlanta. Third quarterfinal. Sintalol is one of the players in the semifinals. What a story that would be. Currently, it is Flame Killer versus Sintelo in the upper half. But right now, one of these players is trying to find themselves a spot in the other semifinal right now. And, and for similar Siyun, lineups, but for Siyun, he either takes a mirror match or he goes for the priest. Now, if I'm Siyun, I, Siyun might arguably think the priest is favored against the entire lineup. Right. But I don't think. He's one of the players that would want to queue it first, just in case. He might slip in a win through with one of the other decks. But it's going to be interesting to see, because Togwaggle Druid Mirrors are in notoriously crazy. They are insane. You're they, on your own in that one when he queues it. I still have not, to this day, figured out the Togwaggle Druid Mirror. And all of my Togwaggle Druid experience when playing it, these are two of the people I talk to when playing. So that's so, going to be good. We're going to see some high-level togging action if it does go into the mirror. Some high-level togging, some high-level woggling. <laughs> so but we're not going to see that yet because of Lee Seung oh. picked his priest. So we're not going to see it at all then. Oh, we might if he's a priest might. losers. We yeah. might. Bring victory. Oh, and this is a um, silly priest. Yeah, this is. Cloning. Cloning Gallery Priest. What it aims to do is there's a copy of Zerg's Cloning Gallery, which will allow you to bring out 1-1 one -one copies of all the minions currently in your deck. So the whole goal is to try and get something like two raiding elementals that will reduce the cost of your spells, a Prophet Velen, and a Malagos. And then just mind blast away. But unfortunately, yeah, well, the thing that makes this hard is you're almost guaranteed to draw one or two of those pieces. So you that's then have the hardest to part. manipulate the game. So, you know, the games where you just don't draw any of them, you play the cloning gallery, it is so much fun if you're that person. But in the real world, you tend to draw a radiant elemental on one of your, your big guys first. And you have to sort of mess around with shadow essence, etc., and try and make something stick. And the, that just makes things a lot, lot harder. The alternative win condition is crazy shenanigans with Lyra. Yes. Lyra can do some pretty busted stuff still, especially when you have two copies of Gilded Gargoyle that's going to be allowed, that's going to give you a coin into your hand. That way you can, you know, just generate more pre spells. Yeah, and you just tend to have spell damage on the board. That's the nature of the deck. So suddenly Lyra's mediocre pulls can suddenly just be ridiculous. Just holy smite you for a million and things like that. That's a lot. One million damage for one mana. Well, zero mana, one minus one mana. One million the damage, <coughs> Neil. Bond. That gets through most druids. I'd say that gets through Jake. most Hearthstone classes. <laughs> Apart from druid. Apart from warrior and druid. <laughs> Yeah, much more for Swaggy to think about this time around in terms of board development and board control. And one of the problems of fighting this priest is a lot of the damage comes from off the board. Yes. One minute it's not there, and one minute you're dead. That is the scariest part about this priest, is you never know when they hit nine mana if you're dead or not, because they can output a lot of damage. Each Mind Blast will do 20 damage. That's 40 right off the bat. And then... And Swaggy's only got 43. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it is turn four, after all. <laughs> this Gilded Gargoyle will do a little bit of chip damage. <laughs> it's, it's relevant, though. Like, joking aside, that that 40 is 
getting up there as, as the upper bound. Obviously, the Holy Smites help as well, but <laughs> it's amazing how you do have to keep that armor under some sort of control. Siuna also has to be careful that he doesn't dilute his Resurrect pool that much. So the Eternal Silvertudes will bring back a minion that's died, but if he has, let's say, four or five minions that have died, but he really wants that Malagos, yep. sometimes he won't be guaranteed that Malagos. Yeah, you tend not to win it on your first go. Forgetting the example where you don't draw the minions, you play it and you kill them. You tend not to win it on your first attempt. You have to sort of keep making Malagoses and Velens and... Take your opportunity to get those chunks of damage in while you can. You often kill them over two or three attempts yes. with Resurrect, etc. Uh, the Spellstones obviously become huge later on as well to like do it all again. This is looking pretty strong for Swaggy G here. Nourish into double Arcane Tyrant is going to put the pressure on Siyun. And right now he doesn't have much to do besides either coining out that... Shadow, Shadow Essence. Essence. Yeah. I was trying to think of the name of it. Or playing Zilliax. And both those plays are a little rough. It was funny talking to Gallon about this deck recently at um, WSG. And the opinion was like, nobody really knows why it wins. It's just really good. <laughs> it was obviously a very <laughs> Gallon thing to say. Obviously, he does know why it wins. but Against Druid, Druid can't necessarily mm. constantly answer minion after minion. So if you play a Malagos and then they are forced to kill it with a Naturalize, and you just resurrect it, they they can't keep answering it. It is eventually just going to stick. Yeah, you're not playing with 30 card deck, you're playing almost with a 60 card deck, because the 30 that have been killed off also come back and mess around. And you're constantly having to remember what is in that pool, what you're trying to do. And again, you're not likely to get the one turn kill, but you're likely to get two big hits. I think Swaggy G is going to go ahead and... Uh, yeah, he's just doing good draw. stuff right now. I think he's going to use it for draw, just trying to see what's off the top. Finds an MC tech. Wouldn't be surprised to see him play that. Now, he, there may have been some arguments for trying to get the Starf out of the hand, but he doesn't necessarily have a play on the following turn, so he's going to hold on to that. MC tech just provides a little bit more pressure. Yeah, Starf can deal with um, a sort of a YOLO. Haven't heard that word for a while. Cloning gallery. Ooh, Gilded Gargoyle is not the most prime card. It's not the worst, and the reason I say that is because it won't dilute his three minion pool that he's going to have. So if he goes something like coin, coin, Malagos in the following turn, he'll be able to guarantee a resurrect on the Malagos because the only three minions to have died will be Malagos, Zilliax, and a Gilded Gargoyle. The Gilded Gargoyle can't be presented twice in Discover options, so that's why I say it's not that bad. However, it's bad as Sayun's body language is giving away because he's going to overdraw if he doesn't just dump a coin here. And then if he dumps a coin and the Gilded Gargoyle doesn't die... Then he's dumped a coin. Then he's dumped a coin for no reason. Yeah, it's like he's, he's cornered here. If he doesn't do it, he loses a card, and you can't afford to do that. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. And that's why he's unhappy with his situation. <laughs> Have you ever seen anyone rope? An entire turn wondering about just to play a coin. Dump a coin. It's been quite some time. He's not going to do it. Wow. I mean, if Swaggy really wants to, he could. Uh, he could dump. He could burn a lot. Well, no, I guess the naturalized the coin. The coin would come up after the naturalized draw. Okay, so yeah. you would burn the coins. There's no real need to do that. I think he's actually thinking about that right now. <laughs> But the draw two will come first. The coin will get burned. Yep. Oh, looks like he's just going to go for it. So you said some unpleasant words, though, I think. Oh, we long lines of, oh, dear. That's not fun. But Swaggy G does get to burn two cards with that and prevent the coin. The coin's not necessarily the biggest part. It's more so trying to get rid of cards from the hand. Yeah, Swaggy's just dumping anything onto the board that he can. The pressure is annoying as Priest as well. You want them to leave you alone so you can get all your things. Ooh, a Mind Blast burned. That's not looking good for Seum right now. He's just going for the cloning gallery. Here's a load of stuff. Lyra's on the board. It's going to give him some spells. Two Radiants. Just keep drawing cheap stuff and you're okay. It's got to be Holy Smite here just to kind of clean up the board a little bit. Yep. He's going to keep generating spell after spell. He needs to go quick on this turn. Not sure what's going to come out of this. Having that Maligos in hand is not making this fun either. Another cloning gallery. <laughs> you just do it again. And it'll be unexpected as well. 
Uh, this is why Swaggy's been keeping that Starfall. Yes. For, for this exact situation. Saiyan having that Maligos is just making things so messy. Look at this army. It's an army only a priest could love. Wouldn't be surprised if he's considering silencing off something like the Lich King just to have like an 8-8 body on the yeah. board. Because he doesn't necessarily need the Lich King card. Unless it's Death Grip, and he would want that. And you might as well get something different whilst you're in live territory. That's a pretty good pair of cards here. Both these spell stones are going to be upgraded pretty quickly. Another way you silence something, it gets bigger. Because the reduced minus seven, minus seven is an effect. <laughs> so I can draw first just in case there's something that changes his mind. Probably won't. Ooh, we'll have, you know, part the combo done. Yeah, and Swaggy thinks, hey, look at me, I just killed your board, but cloning gallery number two is, is on the way soon. Okay, not the most impactful. Lyra's most likely going to have to be the pick here. I think Lyra's interesting here because it forces Swaggy to get rid of it, which sets up your next cloning gallery really nicely. I actually don't know if Swaggy G necessarily has to get rid of it. But he'll think he does. I think. I'm not sure. Oh. He needs to get rid of that. There's a lot of things he wants to get rid of. And this is what I was saying about the, um, you know, you have to get everything several times here. He's playing with cards that haven't even been drawn yet and creating massive threats. There's an actual Lich King. That could get some of the damage, because remember he burned that Mind Blast. That could get some damage that he might require. I think Siyun's going to go for the Spellstone here, though. I think he needs to keep this pressure on while he can. But he knows there's two MC tags oh, on the list. He might be thinking of putting the Maligos into the Spellstone pool first. That's what's taking a moment. But hey, look at Ooh, this lot. powerful. That's a lot of stuff. The MC text is just going to be... <laughs> as long as nobody, like, just steals somebody's hammer out the shores with their own MC tech. <laughs> Maybe uh, Swaggy G tries to take the Prophet Vel and just becomes a Maligos Druid <laughs> oh. with his own swipe. <laughs> Spellstone your everything for hundreds. Swipe you to oblivion. Swipe is funny because it would deal eight and then two. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the first part would be really good, but then the second part would be <laughs> not <Yeah>. so good. <laughs> wow. So he's really feeling this. Using his time incredibly well. And Swaggy, meanwhile, is struggling. He's not struggling, but... He's got two game plans going on at once, which is making it difficult for him. He's having to withstand what is now a gigantic army. And all the time he's messing around, like throwing away spreading plagues in the way. And what's the point of killing one of these minions when there's six of them? He's not getting closer to his own goal other than by natural draw, because his mana's being tied up. The craziest thing is, if Sion draws a Mind Blast, although one has already been burned, he will actually have lethal. <laughs> I guess he will be able to Vivid Nightmare, one of the Prophet Villains, and deal 40 damage with a single Mind Blast. That's ridiculous. I love it. Ridiculous is a word for it. Are you saying that Orange actually said that this worked really well for him as intended? And it was Fina that was like, meh. Yeah, meh. It, when they explained it to me, I bumped into them at the airport, they're explaining sort of why they thought it was good. It made a lot of sense that it is just the best way of killing combo decks because it's so consistent. Um, sorry, control decks. Did I say combo decks? I did. I'm dumb. Nah, I wouldn't worry about it. I don't. I'm used to it. I get caught washed all the I've time. I've had 35 years to get used to it. <laughs> we could, uh... Soon could Psychic Scream to try and make sure he never draws his combo pieces. <laughs> yeah, have some of these. <laughs> oh, 16 damage, holy water. <laughs> What's going on? This just is like a meme stream again right now. <laughs> he looks like he just wants to rip the Vivid Nightmare, get the Mind Blast off the Lyra, and call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like what he wants to do. Must consider. That would be good play. <laughs> He's really hovering he really over this Vivid Nightmare. This. 
It's like, I can win the game one in 30 or something. Oh, more stuff. This is absolutely insane. Topsy. Oh, Topsy. <laughs> he's going to go quick, though. Rope is burning. Yeah, I think he's probably used to this by now, but he reminds me of delay in, in the fact that he does push it a little bit too close sometimes. But that's a lot of damage just coming naturally right now. Okay, MC Tech into swipe would be a full clear. Wow. If you take either of the Prophet Velens, it would be a full clear on the board. If you had a swipe. If you had a swipe. That's you can you can draw for a you swipe. Can? With the Wrath. The Wrath that could do six and kill the other Prophet Velen. Now we're thinking. I've learned to think like a washed up caster during the course oh, of working you. with you, Jay. It's been fun. Could also mind control hmm. the Lyra. Actually, most of the things you mind control, mind control are pretty good Pretty for you good here. right now. I think the worst is actually the Lich King. Yeah, it's the only one that doesn't really do anything. If he hits this Velen and then draws for the swipe, Engaging I'm going to lose it. Okay. He doesn't. You're still here. You're not going to lose I have not lost it yet. Keep it all corked up for later for the finals. <laughs> or for whatever happens in this game. At the end of all those great looking options, that was a really mediocre ending to the yes. turn. I expected so much more from that turn. And now this is just a live go thing, isn't it? You just you're gonna kill them with minions, Lyra's gonna get it done, just just play some stuff. I think Seon's trying to figure out if there's some kind of lethal here. Yeah, he that's what he's going the for. Turvy. The issue with this is if you go for something like the Spirit Lash, you're going to <laughs> kill off the Grizzly. How many psychic screams do you need, Seon? I, I think Seon sees something here that yeah. may be lethal. He, he's got a... Um, the Topsy was played too quickly for him not to have an idea. Not having any Radiance in play is what's making this a little bit slow. He just wants to resurrect, push the damage face. Another <laughs> Bellin. This is just absurd. Yeah, he's, the spells, uh, the only relevant thing about the spells has been they've just been providing consistent small amounts of value. They're not actually killing Swaggy. What's killing Swaggy is this army of seven sevens. There's the swipe. But where's the MC Tech? Oh, where's the MC Tech? Plus his team's a bit more healed up now. <laughs> One thing I'd be curious about is how does Swaggy G combat this priest? I don't know. This is why it's a good call. When you bring this sort of lineup, this priest is I can rest is not a mean deck. It has a job in Last Hero Standing. I think you wouldn't bring it to Conquest very often. I would agree with that. I think it can sweep lineups if people aren't prepared for it. Because it's so bad against Aggro. Not so bad, but it's, it's pretty awkward against Aggro. You end up relying on sort of early spell damage for Spirit Lash, and early isn't a thing the priest does too well. So I think if you're Swaggy G here, he's going to cue the Warrior. And the reason I say this is because he knows the Warrior is extremely unfavored against the Togwaggle Druid. Yep. And then he knows the Warrior probably doesn't have that great of a chance for the Priest. So I think it has a better chance against Priest than it would against Druid. As crazy as that no, sounds. No, I agree with that because you can, you can clear multiple boards. You can get your health out of the range to make them need multiple boards. There's quite a few things they can do to, to make it awkward for you. And like you say, the, the, the other matchup as we saw earlier is pretty nasty. Does he have an Azalina in his warrior as well? Shall bring victory. He does not have an Azalina. He went for a more anti-aggro route. He has a whirlwind, which would be great against Xerix cloning. So he really is doomed when it comes into that. Yeah, might as well run this in and see what he can get out of it. So he's deliberately keeping the Lich King. Just wants a Lich King. I don't blame him. It may also be that he wants to try and get it out of the pool. For the fetch. For the Resurrects, yeah. because his most no, important Resurrect is something survive. like 
Lyra. Yeah, it depends. It depends going. how the game works out. You either want the spell damages or the Lyras. Depends how it goes. This is not the hand he's looking for, though. Well, taking stuff out the pool. It's the one thing I think will separate players when they're playing this deck. Is I think the greatest players with this deck will understand the concept of not diluting the pool. Yeah, you have to play a lot to get into that move. Yes. I, I played quite a bit of this deck, and stuff like keeping the Lich King just about a fringe thing I might have thought of. It's like it's obvious <laughs> when you see it, but in terms of your own instincts, you know, there's exactly. so much else going on in the deck. Uh oh, is Eddie gonna do it? Is Siyun gonna do it? The infamous hero power opponent's face. So one thing that I think um, is very underrated about Sayun is his, yeah, he looks incredibly serious all the time, but his, his capacity to understand memes is definitely a strength of his. He's definitely a funny guy. He is. I've gotten the pleasure of getting to talk to him more and more. He's definitely a funny guy. Doesn't seem like it when you're looking at him on camera. He's yeah. hilarious. He's busy doing well. <laughs> He's busy focused on his games. <laughs> Does he talk much? Um, I don't know how much you get to speak to him, really, but does he? has he spoken much about sort of frustrations of getting all these top 16s and not really getting that well-known? I don't think he's quite that vocal about it, but I can definitely tell that it frustrates him at times, where he really wants to have that breakout performance. I believe his closest was at DreamHack Montreal last year, where Muzzy won. Yeah. He made top four. Uh, that was, that was, was the he second? I mean, day that I was, yeah, he was second. It's forever embarrassed me that that was basically Muzzy versus a guy. Because the whole tournament was about will Muzzy make number one for last call, and everybody else, unless there was a delay, was just a guy. You're not and, wrong. And that final was literally a cast of Muzzy versus somebody, and Sayun sort of just got lost in the shuffle there. Then this year, he's only get, keeps getting stuck at top eights, and he didn't have the. So Casey had a similar problem until Orange County, but Casey was already Casey. Yes. If you say Casey's made a load of top 16s, everyone goes, of course he has. He's really good. But if you say Sayun's made a load. And you forget to say he was the guy who made it to the top two against Muzzy. He just hasn't had quite as much recognition as I feel he deserves. Definitely a different kind of world. And it looks like Swaggy G is just putting the pressure on yeah. Stonehill Defender into taking the chain gang just to play it on four to get this Elise down on five. And Prophet Velen. Pretty good minion to get off of that. There's a lot of weak ones, but Prophet Melon's not one of them. Yeah, it's not like Sayun has to withstand a huge onslaught here. He has to withstand two or three turns of mildly annoying minions. So, and there's enough healing in the deck that he will get some of that back if, as long as he stabilizes. But looking at Sayun's hand right now, it's not much healing. Not much healing is going on. No, it'll turn up though. It's, it's one of those decks where you just play to the top. You don't want it in your hand right now. You'll get, you'll get something later, either from a Lyra or just naturally from Spirit Lash. This is quite a bit of pressure coming out from Swaggy G, though. It is. Yeah, definitely taking that Chain Gang who's, has given him a chance to at least scare Sayun in this one. This feels like the pivotal game to me. If, if Sayun loses this, he's oof. I would say so, especially having to have Cube Warlock <laughs> into Togwaggle Druid. I would say so. That's silence. I mean, Swaggy G's plan might just be to not let that minion die. Just don't put it in the resurrect pool. Yeah. I mean, puts him another two attack on the board as well. All it does is value trade into a chain gang, and I think he's fine with that. Anything better than Psychic Scream is what Saiyan will be looking at for 74 of his 75 seconds here. All of these plays are pretty miserable because unless you Psychic Scream, that elites the Trailblazer is pushing five turn after turn. But if you do Psychic Scream, you know the Warrior's <laughs> deck is full scream. of five cost minions and... <laughs> Not only that, <coughs> but you put your Velen, the one one of the minions you want to resurrect, into your opponent's deck. Yeah. Mm. Is there any... So yeah, taking the coin, because that's the easy part of the turn. This wants to go for the coin, Lich King. Okay, he's good with this. This is a fairly weak into Super Collider, though. Super Collider, I, I don't think Psyche G minds getting that down this turn. That's going to allow him to push through nine damage 
It's Death and Decay was a big pickup. I think Swaggy is going to try and think of any other play besides the Super Collider. Yeah, it's always the same. The, the players look for, they see the obvious thing much, much quicker than I would. I mean, I see it quickly enough. But <laughs> um, then they just spend the whole turn just concentrating for the improvement. Well, the and funny thing about the back Super Collider is you, you do the Super Collider now. You push the damage through. You push nine damage through to the face. You put Siyun down to seven damage yep you then hopefully allow the elise to connect through and if it does you can go explodinator brawl to deal the final points of damage to end the game Ooh. that's where he's at we may see explodinator brawl end this game that would be silly i like it oh we can't just cast that Wow. I remember last turn he did have the option, although it wasn't a fun one, to Psychic Scream and reset a bunch of stuff. Would have made his life a bit awkward, but dying is going to make it even more awkward. Yeah, dying is the last thing you want to do if you're soon here. I think there are plenty of other things he would rather do besides die. <laughs> and that would be, like, win and go to the semifinals and then hopefully win that one and try and become DreamHack Atlanta champion. Yeah. I've heard it's really good being DreamHack Atlanta champion. You get to I dine so. out on it for a year, give speeches so. at parties and stuff. Get to become a caster. Yeah, but apart from that, the rest is great. As a matter of fact, one of these players wins. They may be coming for my job. Yeah. That's scary. <laughs> well, <how laughs> nobody win. Cancel the final. Dr. J doesn't want it to happen. His reign is coming to an end. When do we tell these players that secretly the winner has to play me in a grudge match. <laughs> I don't think they'd be too scared. <laughs> oh, the Explodinator Brawl is so close to lethal. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Plenty of ways for Sayun to stabilize over the next turn or two, but it's just a case of whether we can get there. Yeah, he's, he doesn't like the look of this. Can even play Zola, copy one of the bombs, oh. and then replay it on the board for the following turn to brawl. And Sayun's got a combination of and he can't amusement death and, and decay because it he will die. kill him. He's even pushing the super collider face to set this up. <laughs> He's just dead. And the radiance in hand. If they weren't there, this would be a bit more interesting. He's just dead. He, he can't do anything. <laughs> he has to cloning gallery to get Ziliax to heal for one, and then hope Brawl doesn't kill off one of the goblins. <laughs> but then Super Collider just ends the game. <laughs> it's not funny if if you're a Saiyan fan, but the fact we're in this board state. You can't play Obsidian statue because that guarantees Brawl is lethal. That's so silly. I mean, he can hero power death and decay. Yeah. I guess that keeps him alive. I think that's all he has. He has no other play here. What's the rest of his turn if he does that? Has four mana remaining. Do you dump the Radiance in anticipation of playing uh, Cloning Gallery next turn? No, you don't because he's still got the Super Collider up. He has to death and decay this to live at two health. To play one of the radiants, yeah, to play on the super collider and give himself the eight mana Xerix into the other radiant next turn, and that will actually set up lethal for him next turn. Light the fuses. But dealt with. If that had lived, that would have been terrifying the other way. So even though he's on two and Swaggy's on 31, and this is still in the balance. The funniest thing about this is the tech inclusion of a whirlwind through Zarek's cloning gallery will allow Swaggy G to push <laughs> final points of damage. And I don't think there's any taunt minions left on the deck besides Ziliax. Because the Obsidian statue's in hand. Yep. He's played the Lich King. Soon dies to so many cards here. 
But there's not much he can do about it. Spellstone only doesn't do enough. And the fact that Radiant died is just such a massive deal. I mean, he could go Radiant Elemental, Spellstone, hopefully hit the other Radiant Elemental, Prophet Velen, and then he can push at maximum 24. It's so close. Does he just have to play the Obsidian statue? He has to do something. The rope is burning and he's got some stuff to go through. But then Swaggy G can just put the Zilliax onto the Dynamatic to make sure he doesn't gain the health. And then can he win the game through that means? Because he won't be able to gain health because of the Divine Shield. Uh-huh. He can Whirlwind, play the Divine Shield, and hit in. But he would have to use his Super Collider as well. I think if you're Swaggy G, you have to use Shield Block for an out here. Yeah, this is... Assuming it's not lethal and we haven't missed something crazy, this is not anywhere near over because Sayun's hand is going to kill you very swiftly at some point. All right, Shield Block, there's a couple answers in the deck. Iron Beak, Owl, Shield Slam. Mind Control Tech's not one of them. Yeah, so this is the option you were discussing. So if the right... And the issue is he'll gain four. Mm -hmm. Oof. And now Sayu knows that there isn't a way to deal with it. Picks up the Prophet Venom. Still, if he's a spirit lash away from just stabilizing here, but he hasn't got it. No. And he hasn't got shadow vision. He's just got so many outs to stabilize. And he whips. He whips. He was trying to hit the extra statue. He still can holy smite one of the chain gangs and yep. hero power to stay alive. Yep. But that was a huge and massive whiff. He needed the obsidian statue there. But anytime he gets spirit lash, he does stabilize. At least semi. Oh, and the owl was one draw away. But next turn, um, so he no longer has a Prophet Velen in the deck. How much damage does he have? It's not enough, right? So... It's not enough. Because he drew the Velen, he's finally got the position where he can do the cloning gallery shenanigans with the Mind Blast, but the Velen is in hand. It still looks a really powerful turn, though. But still, without access to heal, Iron Big Owl can just come out on the last taunt and end the game. And he has no way of interacting with the board. Oh, the Grizzly. Playing a load of spells here. He has to hope this Lyra does something. That's not something. That's not something. That's very nothing. Topsy Turvy, does that allow him to do anything? Oh, it does. Topsy Turvy lets him kill off. Dire oh, horn. Oh, oh. Eternal servitude. Oh no. He has to evaluate whether he wants to try and risk going for something like the obsidian statue or fitting in a hero power so he guarantee he doesn't die. He's got a decent chance of getting not many things have died. I think you have the hero power. It's too risky at this point. Wow. Brawl and Owl and Coin is not the stuff that Swaggy needs. Dynamatic. Dynamatic. Well, that tidies up the mess. That it does. But Swaggy G is so close to lethal. But he's so close to running out of stuff. What now? But Sayon currently has obviously no direct damage in hand either, so... The danger has short-term passed here for Swaggy in that regard, whereas a minute or two ago I was like, hey, this is lethal for various circumstances. Light the fuses! Pew, 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 pew. Almost killed the MC tech. Yeah. And I, the worst part about this is I don't think Swaggy G can switch it up to a game plan where he goes trying to control his opponent. 
No, I mean, he's gone all in on this kill you, correctly all in on this yes. kill you strategy. It looked like for all the world he'd got it done. He had outs to win the game a few turns ago. But now so eventually is going to get some healing or, or winning. And now you feel like Soyun will take this if he's very careful. Zarek's cloning gallery can come out. Could give another, I believe, Radiant Elemental. Oh. Maligos. And if Soyun can have a turn where he just gains any significant amount of health, it's over. Oh. Shadow Essence, if he finds the other Maligos. Yep. It's not quite lethal yet. Oh, gosh. He could just die to a Mega Assembly. Did he just miscount that? I think, I think he, did. he did. Look at his face. He could die to a Mega Assembly into any buff on this Dynamatic now. <sighs> yeah, he just miscounted that I think the nerves somewhere. were getting to him there. They're getting to both players, I think. I'm not sure last turn Swaggy realized the Dynamatic wasn't going to hit the... I think he did, but I think he had to go for it. Yeah, I wasn't sure though. The look on his face was a little bit puzzled for a second when he played it. I don't think it made the difference to the play. I don't think it was like actually a mistake. I think it surprised him for a moment. If Swaggy G plays the Dire Horn Hatchling, it forces Seiyun to heal his face. Wow. Looks like he's just going to go for the hero power. Well, Seiyun doesn't have much damage left in the deck, but he does have lots of big minions. And Swaggy just... Yeah. This is now reminiscent of last game, where Seiyun just controls the board, slowly gets some big stuff down. And obviously, Swaggy just doesn't have enough. He doesn't know about the second cloning gallery, of course, so... I was actually curious if the second cloning gallery would have been... some kind of lethal as well. Just pushing damage face, trying to end this game. It uh, may just have to be MC Tech Brawl Hero Power. Is he going to Brawl first? The Saiyans use a lot of stuff. He has. Oh, and the MC Tech lives. <laughs> wow, now he's back in a situation where he's actually doing more damage than Saiyan's healing for. Saiyan finally gets his Spirit Lash, but oh way too God. late. But now there's an unchecked Lyra and a bunch of spells. Reckless Flurry allows him to clear off the Lyra <laughs> and play the Direhorn Hatchling. But after that, he's got nothing but a coin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this whole game has been God. amazing. Why do we start with 30 health? Why do we just all start with 4? Makes things much more intense. It really does. What does this cloning gallery give? Not a lot. There's a Lyra. Think. Yep. There oh, is. There's more than I thought, actually. That's what Siyun has to work with right now. So they're the four things that are left in his deck as well, in minion terms. That's, that's plenty. Dr. Boom! Whoa. It's picked up off the top! Can fit in both hero powers. You saved the coin for this moment, Dr. It's, kab Jay. it's kaboom! Kaboom to your board, and Sayun cannot believe it. What an eternal servitude. Lich King! What, yeah, what, what's going on? Gets two Lich King cards from this. There can only be a Lich King. No, a there can be Lich two. King. I'm looking at two right now, Lorinda. Death Coil. Swaggy's up to 14. If he finds Shield Slam. Oh, Gluttonous Ooze. Well, he has just... Both players have just drawn what they could get away with several turns in a row. So you're in the sip of water. That's usually a giveaway when someone thinks they've won, by the way. There's the sip of water. The sip of water, the, your brain relaxes slightly and remembers what it's supposed to be doing in terms of staying hydrated and external things. I I need a sip of water right now. Yeah, I think I have a sip of water, actually. That is definitely not water, Lorinda. <laughs> okay, then. People leaving that to their imaginations. <laughs> 
Well, Swaggy. You're kind of dead. I mean, he just has to play the gluttonous ooze. I, I guess he's considering holding on to it just in case one of the cards was Frostmourne. Yeah, you might as well think about all the options before you do that. I mean, it's the obvious play. Again, as I can say, when, when there's an obvious play, you might as well think about deeper things you might need for other turns, but nothing to look at there, really. And this is just going to be lethal from Siyun. What a series we're having. I was going to say, what a game, but this series is completely insane. This is absolutely crazy. I, I am I am baffled right now. That game was so back and forth. It could have gone either way. And, I mean, it's not gone quite how we expected, but you did say this priest looks safe. <laughs> Just got to hope you get the job. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm getting that job, but... Nah. Like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to direct everyone to Swaggy G's hand right now. Swaggy Skull on 5? Swaggy Skull on 5. Is that what the G stands for? Yeah, that's what the G stands for, is Skull on 5. Good at Skull. <laughs> right. Gotta have Skull. <laughs> Remember the last game as well, Sayun kept that, that Lich King. Yes. That, that turned out to be fairly important because it did, did make his, his pulls better. These things matter. I don't know. I have no idea if it matters enough. And don't forget, he's a card short, so it's almost impossible to factor in what would have happened. But whoa! Looking at the model again, coming out from Sion here. Really wants that Prophet Velen inside of the deck. Doesn't really want it inside of the hand because it forces him to play it out. And although and Swaggy does have the skull, he doesn't have a whole lot else going on. I know. I know Cubelock doesn't have a whole lot going on this early usually anyway, but because he has nothing to interact with. Because Sayun doesn't do anything himself for a few turns. That's an important draw for Sayun right there. That card is definitely what he needs in this matchup. But you're right. The one thing with Warlock, though, is since it does have access to Life Tap, is it will get to those plays quicker mm -hmm. and quicker. So we can see here already getting you know access to some of the demons for the Skull and also just having Tar Creeper to try and soak up some of the damage. That way he doesn't get too low on life. Yeah, that, that's going to be the, the problem for him, is you can't over-life tap against this deck because you want to make it as hard as possible for those Mind Blasts to be active. And there's no weapon removal in this Priest. So once this Skull is active, it will be active for the entirety of the game. Sayun is just sitting there thinking, don't draw anything now. He wants to draw nothing of substance. He just wants to go cloning gallery, kill you. Yes. Second Mind Blast, please. Off we go. Turn eight, win. And Siyun knows it. Siyun knows Swaggy's nickname. <laughs> Go and play out the Shadow Essence. Radiant Elemental, not the most impactful, will allow him to try and get that cloning gallery out a little bit earlier, though. Yeah. That. You saw Swaggy there tap instead of playing the Tar Creeper. And that was mostly just trying to get the Doom Guards to the hand or something like the Giant. And this is why Siyun couldn't just hold on to the coin and go for the, the turn eight. Absolute ridiculousness. He needed to combat potential Doom Guards himself. As it is, we can see the hand, and actually outside of that mounted joint, the hand's not that menacing, considering. It's definitely a nuisance. So you can pick up another series. coin, I mean... He's going to have to hold that coin for the cloning gallery, though. Must I think Sion's trying to find a way that he doesn't have to force himself into playing Psychic Scream next turn. I like, I like the way he just hovered over the skull. Does this card still do what it's done for the last nine months? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Damn it. That's one of my outs gone. I was hoping he'd be nerfed. No Doom Guards. Boilers are a bit obnoxious. So he got to his notepad really quickly after that. It's like, yes, not Doom Guard <laughs> again. There's one, though. Card, though. I think Swaggy is going to get as aggressive as possible. Does, Swaggy's got to be careful here, though. If he leaves up the Radiant, does he just lose next turn? I think it depends on... Because Sayun trades in the Gargoyle, gets a coin. I think he's going to take the trades. Oh, no. It looks like he's going face. Is this just it? It, it may just be. You trade in the Gargoyle, you get yourself a coin. You coin out the cloning gallery. You get another two radiants and you pew pew. He would he would have to hit them though. I mean, is there a way he doesn't hit them? Let's see. 
There's another Gargoyle on the deck, so he could hit that one. He's going to have six minions, so he has to hit Whiff six times. He has to miss one of them. He'll get, he could get a Zilliax, Gargoyle. I think we're going to find out. Yeah, he's doing the same thing you are right now. Lyra, Grizzly. Here comes a the coin. There's we're, no we're way he wins. This is game. Sayun is going to the semi-finals. He finds it. Getting that Radiant there wasn't taken down by Swaggy G. Allowed the cheaper cloning gallery. And I think if he'd taken a moment there just to kill that and board himself one extra turn, that could have been different. It definitely could have been much different. The only issue is Ooh. eventually he was going to live to that Xerix cloning gallery. I think Swaggy G just said, you know what?